guys what is happening so i've recently had um a fun idea that i think i'm going to try here on youtube where i'm going to show you from start to finish the process of if you were applying to a gallery for the first time ever you've never done it and you don't have any art so i recently found a call on instagram for this gallery that i really admire it's called uh soft times gallery and i went to their like initial inaugural opening and I've applied to some open calls from them for a few times before and been denied. So rejection is not a bad thing. It's just a no. And, you know, a no is actually helpful. So I'll explain more about that later. But I, I'm going to create new pieces for this open call from start to finish and show you that process. And the theme of the open call is called the Big Softy. And so they're looking for works that have a soft touch or like use kind of like um, softer mediums. So I really want to experiment with yarn because I've been knitting a lot lately and I'm obsessed with just like the feeling of it and the colors of some yarn. So I'm going to go ahead and take you to the yarn store. We'll get some supplies. I really want to use punch needle in some of these pieces. I've seen a lot of work uh, lately where people are making these giant installations made entirely out of yarn so i want to include some of that into my painting so that should be fun but come along with me i will show you how to apply to an open call and make art for it so without further ado let's get going all right so what's up you guys i had to turn on my desk lamp just because it's a little dark today it's raining outside which is very cozy but it doesn't make for the best lighting but here are my initial sketches for my paintings i feel like i've been kicking these ideas around in my head for a bit and I have ideas for colors and stuff, but I just really wanted to sketch it out beforehand um, just to get a plan. I think it definitely helps me a lot more. The last painting I did, I didn't sketch out, and I just feel at a loss with it right now. But So I'm going to do some punch needle sections here and here, and then I really want this piece to be focused more on circles. So I'm going to have this form that's like covered in black polka dots that's white, and then I really want these like pom-poms to kind of form an arc throughout the piece and then this one is going to be more focused on gradients and then I'm going to have one pom-pom to be the focal point in this one so I'm super excited for these two I just want to make a crap ton of pom-poms but yeah let's go ahead and get started on these So here's me feverishly editing this video before I go on Christmas vacation. I'm gonna go to California and Guatemala this year and I'm super excited about it. So bear with me, but this was just me getting my paintings set up on the wall. I decided to do them on unstretched canvas because I knew I would be taking them with me when I traveled this Christmas. Uh, so they're easy to roll up in my suitcase this way. They are believe 24 inches by or 30 inches by 24 inches so they're pretty small and they roll up pretty nicely and I just gessoed them pretty fast and began blocking out my composition <laughs> And for this part of the painting, I knew I wanted to use spray paint and create a gradient, so I left that part unprimed with gesso just because uh, the spray paint lays on the raw canvas so nicely and I wanted to keep that. And then here's me taking the tape off. Look at that crisp line. That's my little squiggle right there. This ceramicist, her name is Tony Darling Frank, and I actually saw some of her work in person when I went to Cape Cod with my parents, but it was like $100 for this mug. And she had a second sale recently, 
and I bought one of her mugs at a very discounted price because I think it's like not perfect or up to her standards or whatever. But first off, it comes with this really cute card. Damn, it must be stressful shipping ceramics. Like, I'm afraid to open it. Oh, wow. Look at how beautiful this is. I love the handle and the hand on flowers of this. What a work of art. So cool. I really was white. I think the bottom's unglazed, but I don't know if that's because of the kiln that she uses, or maybe that's why it was a second, but I kind of like it. Look at how cool this is. Check it. Sick mug. Flowers. Chunky handle. They're neat. And then like I do most of these abstracted pieces, I begin putting in the black parts just because I feel like it helps me find a ground, if that makes sense. And then I knew I wanted a big part of this piece to be this kind of gingham picnic bitch, if you will, print. I don't know if anybody used to follow Best Dressed. I did for sure. And gingham print always makes me think of her so I put that in there and I kind of wanted the gradient to continue so I did a light blue to a light green all the way down to the bottom of my gingham print and this was so time consuming I feel like painting an animal with lights and darks can go super fast but for some reason I feel like doing shapes it takes so long and it's pretty repetitive and not a lot happens on film so I sped it up a little bit just to make you guys feel like you were watching a lot but not gonna lie this took a long time. I also really wanted my lines to look naive and like a kid drew it on there so I didn't really want them to look super straight. I like the wonkiness of the lines. So I guess now would be a good time to talk about why a no is a good thing. First of all, I feel like as an artist you have to get used to rejection and get used to getting no's from a lot of places and a no somewhere is just a yes somewhere else. So that's my mentality.
and this will be this so many And here's me again doing a very repetitive process. I think I had a like 30 minute long video of me putting the dots onto this form and I just could not muster it in me to edit a lot of it. So you get like a couple minutes, a couple seconds really of it. And then here I was uh, tracing out the shape next to the big squiggle because I wanted to make this kind of like tassel looking shape out of some extra yarn I had. I feel like I had no method for this either. I was just taking chunks of cut yarn and gluing them down in layers. So it kind of came out in like an S-shaped um, curve of yarn and I just kind of enhanced that by cutting it, trimming it. Here's the finished piece after applying all the pom-poms and the tassel. I added a little glitter squiggle there at the bottom that I think really makes the piece. And I included just a little bit of me gluing pom-poms onto this. Again, it's not very exciting footage, but it is cool to see the finished piece with all the fluff and just movement on it. And here I am adding the glitter squiggle on this piece and I wanted to use yellow and make it very curly cue uh, just to really play up the softness of the texture and I, I think the yellow makes it feel childlike too kind of like I was talking about with the gingham so I love how these pieces turned out they're so fun. I really love the big pink pom-pom I put in the middle in this one. I really felt like I was breaking the rules with it and yeah. So this is my December video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And then here I've included a clip of me applying to the gallery. Again, I just did it right through their Instagram and I had to answer a few questions like the size and if I was willing to ship it and I love how these turned out. So fun. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next month in 2024.